how are these people really getting their phone numbers? And a question 17-year-old Kayla Hale people. is still asking but herself a day after getting this mysterious text message from a number she doesn't recognize. It was just a message that I would be picking cotton and I would be picked up in a brown van with some other slaves, so it was just weird. Amused, she sent the message to some of her friends, only to learn they'd gotten it too. Their messages from different numbers, sometimes with different details. I thought it was a joke at first, because, you know, like, people play around like that. But it's no joking matter to federal law enforcement. Now investigating the origins of the texts, variations were sent to people in multiple states. And so far, all of the recipients we've identified have been black. It's unclear how the sender would know which numbers to target. That is anyone's guess. I don't know how they're targeting you know, any ethnicity. Private investigator any, uh, Kathy Griffin says the rise of number spoofing apps means we may never find out who's behind this. The same day those racist messages went out, check out what one Texas State student from Houston saw on the way to class, a sign listing women and slaves as property. A brown van. Racist and misogynistic sentiments that now feel all too real for this Houston teen told she'd be picked up in a brown van to go pick cotton. It's confusing. It's kind of scary because, you know, every van I look at, I'm like, damn. <laughs> in a controversial new bill that just passed, all 50 states approved $38 residents across the dmv say someone is sending them hateful messages on their tech on their phones those messages contain racist language and now the fbi has gotten involved melanie allenwick is live this morning in southwest dc with the latest and melanie you've gotten your hands on some of these messages what are you finding out yeah, uh, they're very disturbing, and folks here in the L'Enfant Plaza area are certainly talking about it. You know, the attorneys general for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia have all received complaints about these and say that they are investigating individually and also will be working together. Now, one of the reasons we came here to L'Enfant Plaza is there's different versions of these texts, but one of them actually directs people to come to this location just around the corner. It says with all of their belongings at 5 a.m., take a look here. It goes on to say, that people will be picked up in a turquoise van to be house slaves at Abingdon Plantation. It is signed, sincerely, Trump administration. A second version circulating says the recipient has been selected to pick cotton and to be on the lookout for a brown van that will take them to Plantation Group A. Many people we talked to said they recognize that this is spam intended to further anger and divide people. I don't get it. I don't get I'm, I'm a different generation, so... It's sad why we can't just all get along and live in peace and, as they say, I don't get it, yeah. why we have to just create discord. Too bad the country is divided the way it is, but hopefully it'll get better. It's the only thing we can deal with right now. See what happens and hopefully whoever's sending those out will be found out and be responded to appropriately. It's enough. Just let it go. Just leave it alone. Why can't we just come together as a country, let it go, and just move forward? It's enough already. Just move on. Now, Maryland Civil Rights Division said in a statement that the messages do appear to be targeting black people, and among the recipients were school age and college students, causing significant distress. So there's a number of resources on our website, guys, that you can do. Uh, D.C.'s Department of Homeland Security Intelligence also telling folks that they can send these texts to the Federal Communications Commission, FT, uh, Federal Trade Commission, FTC, Jacqueline, uh, on our web. The texts are truly disturbed. Shalom. First thing and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor that is due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and rule well. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. No one in this gospel, bro. Lifting up the standard of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Um, <laughs> as you saw the two videos I played regarding these text messages that have been hitting Jake's phones, telling them to report to slavery. <laughs> we show you, man, that they want you Jake's back in slavery. And that's the whole theme of this new world order. See, what you Jake's going to realize sooner than later is that this, this so-called white man, this devil, they ain't never liked you to begin with. Yeah, they may be civilized. Yeah, they may give you jobs and, you know, you may be able to kind of contain yourself around Esau. But overall, man, 
they have a hatred for you. And since this guy Trump has been reselected, these Edomites have been, they've been, they've been showing their nuts, man. You know, from the way they've been driving, from the the, 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 the proud, the, the man, they 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 feel like they won the victory. You know, like the scriptures say, peace is safety and sudden destruction. But what what stood out to me about all these videos is the fact on how only Jake's received these text messages. And the funny part about it is, is like, okay, cell phone carriers, right? Which this is all psyop, man. It's all part of the division to, to get people on edge because what can happen is they can, they're trying to rouse Jake up. You see what I'm saying? To, to have a reason to go at it with these officials because remember Trump said on his first day in office, what he's getting ready to do is deploy the National Guard to get these migrants up out of here, man. And he's going to do it by military intervention. And you tribes, man, hey, you're going to fall right under the, the umbrella of that, of that movement, <laughs> okay? Because they don't want you here either. But what I find it ironic is the fact that you got major carriers like T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon, which are the three big ones, right? And then you have like uh, you have like a government phones, then you have a uh, Boost Mobile, uh, you have a couple more. U.S. Cellular is still around, but they're very sporadic. But you have these major cell phone carriers, carriers that oftentimes have access to these numbers. So how are they targeting Jake's? Will make you question. And then the lady said that the FBI has gotten involved in it and they're investigating. But have you ever thought about maybe it could be these police groups that's actually doing this? Because who has the records on the, the, the citizens of the United States? The government, the feds, they got everybody's information. They know who you are, what you are, and where you be at. They know, okay? Because America is highly surveyed. And these cell phones itself, it, it's clearly like this fucking thing is spying on you, man. You know, every time you mention a word or you speak a word or you think about something, then all of a sudden it pops up. Like I could be thinking about eating chicken noodle soup, right? And I can think about it or I can somehow, some way just make a brief mention of it. And all of a sudden I turn on my TV and I go to an app. It's going to have an ad for chicken noodle soup on there. Okay, because the algorithms are constantly learning the habits. You see, so these things are being controlled. They know who they sending these text messages to. And mainly it was women. From what I found out, it was all women that received it. I don't think no Jake men received it yet. At least I haven't heard about it. You know, I mean, I haven't received shit. Even though this is like in the, uh, in the DMV area. But still, you know, most women were the ones that received this. Because you know what? <laughs> and honestly speaking, you women, y'all need to fucking go in slavery. <laughs> for my humble opinion. Because you too proud as it is, man. You know, and honestly speaking, shit, you're supposed to be a sub, a, a servant to your men anyway. But they want to throw you head first back on the cotton field, which, well, honestly speaking, they'll be humbling for you goddamn women because you women are completely out of order. But knowing how much you love the white man so much, shit, you may be willingly willing to go back in slavery because that, that's what they want you anyway. Now, also, they had these um, protesters out there on the signs saying that women are property. And you know what? Women are property. You know, but see what happened is, and you have something that's called newspeak, and everybody is so fueled by their emotions to the point they look at property as being something of a derogatory thing. I'm property. How can you say I'm property? Out of all the property in my crib, everything is well kept. Nothing is mismanaged. I don't just fuck over my shit. I don't throw my shit around. I'll, everything is, is pretty much in order. Because if you have property, you want to take care of it because that's what you do. You take care of it, right? But women, they look at it like, what are you trying to say? You own me? Yes, you are. Uh, yes, uh, the Israelite men do own. Yeah, you you do. You are owned by a man. You are the property of your father until you're married off into your husband. And this is what you women don't understand is that if you belong to a man, that's who you belong to. He's your owner. OK, you are his servant. And no matter how bad that sound and how much you don't like it, deep down inside, you know this shit. This is why you take on the last name of your man. OK, this is why you to do what he tells you to do. So according to the scriptures, the scriptures say he who had the wife, who he he who begetted the wife, begetted the possession and a help unto himself. So you women are possessions. You are our possessions. That's how the Lord created you. This is why you're not stronger than us. This is why you can't outthink us. This is why you're not wiser than us. This is why we're built different, because we're the providers, we're protectors and you are to serve us.
And if we need you to step in and you help, that's how that works, right? But now women are acting afraid. Why? Because all that pride is getting ready to be, be shut down. But anyway, um, let's go from here to the book of uh, Nahum, the first chapter. Because overall, they're not going to be able to put Jake back in that type of servant servitude as a, as a collective. But a lot of you will get caught up in these detention centers. And a lot of you will be put to death in these detention centers. And that's the spirit because that same day I had that vision about being in a FEMA camp, a concentration camp. I woke up and this was one of the first videos I saw. Uh, the brother from Boston actually did a, lit, a, a video on it. How you Israelite women was getting these uh, slave text messages to report <laughs> to your nearest plantation. Or they was going to have some type of Scooby van come and scoop you up and throw you head first into slavery. <laughs> and said, bring all your possessions because you will not be heard from again. And when I was in that concentration camp in my vision, it wasn't nothing but Jake's in there working. So this may be a... a People are writing it off like it's a joke, like it's a light thing. And the FBI is gaslighting you saying, well, yeah, we're going to investigate. But the FBI know goddamn well who's sending this shit out because they've leaked all the information. OK, so them the people you need to be checking with first, because the FBI knows and the Federal Bureau of Investigations. They know all things. Central Intelligence Agency, man, Central Intelligence. They know about everything and everybody. You know, so. You may want to start there, but that vision I had, hey, it falls in line with what the hell they're talking about. Because like I said, in a dream I had, it was nothing but Israelites and slaves. It was, I didn't, I mean, it may have been Edomites in there, but what I saw, it was nothing but Jake's in there. It was like a big work camp and they was working the shit out of Jake. All right. But anyway, this is the book of uh, Nahum 1. And I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, the Lord is good and a stronghold in a day of trouble. And the day of trouble was Jacob's trouble. And the Lord is going to be a fortress unto his elect because the elect is going to be delivered out of Jacob's trouble. But the two thirds of our people are going to get caught up in Jacob's trouble. OK, so you Jakes are going to get caught up in that. And it says and he knew it them that trust in him. But it says, but with the overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof and darkness shall pursue his enemies. But what do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end and affliction should not arise up a second time because they're not going to put us as an entire nation back in slavery to pick cotton. That's not going to happen. Okay, even though that is Esau's uh, wet dream to put every Negro, Latino, and Native American back in captivity. But ultimately, that's not going to happen. Okay, because the Lord said affliction should not arise a second time. All right. So in the meantime, why this guy Trump is, is getting ready, his military, and he's getting ready to, to, to move on to tribes, which he claimed to be migrants. Okay, because now... If you pay attention in school, they're teaching you that slavery was basically immigration now that one side of one people was moved to this side of the world to have viable job opportunity and to be equal with other people. So they're trying to do away with the narrative that you were put here against your will. OK, they tell you that that's not the case and they're calling you immigrants now. So he got an immigration or a migrant task force that's getting ready to round up these people and toss him head first out of America. And the people opposing that was like, well, you're going to have a fight on your hand because we're not going to give up, which is another way of starting a civil war. Because believe it or not, these men that came across the border, they've been earned by the government. Okay, because how the hell are they getting the weapons? They ain't coming across here with weapons. They're giving them the weapons. You know, these violent criminals that they claim to be, these Iranian nationals, these Chinese nationals, which they're not really focusing on them, but they're focusing on the ones called the TDA and the ones that's from Venezuela and Mexico and all that other stuff. Because like I said, they're declaring war on our people. In some way, somehow, you Jakes are going to get roped up in that. Okay, because he's talking about ICE. He's talking about the National Guard, the U.S. military. And then on top of that, you're going to have his uh, Patriot Boys, his Proud Boys is going to assist with that. You know? So there you go. He mentioned detention centers, FEMA camps. So, hey, look up them Auschwitz camps, man, during the time of uh, uh, H I uh, Adolf Sugarguger. Look that up and what they did to those people. That's coming back in a big way. All right, and you women, hey. <laughs> Only thing I can say is, man, hey, you better find you a man of the most high quick because a lot of you ain't looking too good. All right, you see they looking, they, they looking highly afraid, you know, but hey, this is what we told you. This man has a hatred for your ass. All right, you getting ready to find out. Ezekiel 35, and I'm going to start at verses uh, 
Let's start at verses 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophecy against it, and say unto it, Thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Which proves that this is talking about the so-called white man, all right? For all you Israelites out there that want to see that the so-called white man is the seed of Japheth, that's not true. Okay, the white man is not Japheth. Okay, the original Japhites <clears throat> being a dark race of people were your original Europeans, were people of color. Okay, they was pushed forth to like the to Austria, Australia, you know, the, the Hawaiian Islands, your Polynesia. Those are your, your seed of Japheth. Okay, which he does not have a big role in end time prophecy. So the seed of Japheth does not compare to the seed of Esau today because Esau on the world stage is the wicked. Okay, so this is talking about the so-called white man. Esau never identified himself with being the sons of Japheth because you can't be the sons of... Because uh, Esau comes out of the loins of Shem. Okay, Esau is a Shemitic Hebrew, but he's not an Israelite. He's a Hebrew Edomite. So he comes out of the chosen line, but he's not of Isaac. I mean, he's not of Jacob. He's not of the 12 tribes. He comes out of a, a, the, a righteous line, but he's not the right. He's the wicked. Okay, Jacob is the chosen. And Esau is the wicked. And he's not equated with Japheth. You can't be Shem and Japheth. You either one or the other. Either Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And Esau's lineage goes back into the loins of Shem. Which goes through our facts said through Lud, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, then Esau. Okay, because believe it or not, the grandfather of Esau is Abraham. Okay, we got the same parents. They are wicked brothers, but they're not the chosen. We are. All right. But it says here, and I will make and I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be made desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Verse 5, but because thou has a has had a perpetual hatred. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time their iniquity had an end. Right. OK. A perpetual hatred goes into everlasting hatred. So you is receiving his text messages. Hey, he saw us getting ready to show his horns. And this is how about you? I was shy getting ready to start a pot here because, like I said, this is set up to get Jake roused up, man. All right. Because right now we already have one of the, the, the major, the most this place of. His, this is the, the, the most division it has ever been since America in its inception, man. You see, America has never been as divided <clears throat> up until the last, I'm going to say, 15 years, maybe. OK, even more, even more now than so, especially with this last election in the books. Trump took the election by a landslide. Hey, this place is highly divi divided <clears throat> and mainly on uh, political points and in. in you know, about uh, uh, what do you call it? Reproduction rights. It's mainly divided men against women. But now since Esau uh, has gotten back in there, now the people are really on edge because Esau is finna start showing his nuts to you jakes. You know, and you women, hey, they probably finna put you head first in slavery because <laughs> cause like I said, man, you women, you've been living, you've, you've been on that pride. You've been on that pride sauce for the, for the last 60 years and it's about time you get knocked off that high horse. Okay, like that chick said, she looked like she could be Northern Kingdom. She said, it's kind of scary. Yeah, and I, I bet it is. You know, said so she was looking around for white vans. Every time she sees a white van, she gets paranoid. <laughs> Which is set up to generate a, a fear response in people because they want you to be reactive to things. You know, when you're overly reactive to things, you can't really sit back and get your faculties in order because you're, you're too paranoid, you know. But it says, therefore, as I live, says the Lord, Yahweh, I will prepare thee into blood and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And thus would I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut it off from him that passeth out and him that returneth. OK, so the Lord has a heavy judgment for this devil. But hey, he's going to get his pound of flesh off you Israelites, too. And this is really the Lord's anger towards our people because they've, you know, they misbehaved towards the Heavenly Father. All right. Zechariah 14, and I'm going to start at 1. It says, Behold, the day cometh, and the spoil should be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city should be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Okay? And this is going to transpire during the hour of temptation, the time of Jacob's trouble. Because like we said, man, when Esau sends his, uh, his troops 
if he succeeds in that, then a lot of you jakes is going to get grabbed up in the process too. Now, we don't know how it's going to fully play out because they're talking about another assassination attempt. And then on top of that, you got UN troops over here. It, this thing can go many, many which ways, you know, because like I said, those men that came across the border, those young age men, those are military age men. That can be your UN force there. And on top of that, they're getting ready to send the U.S. military out to fight this third world war. So who are going to police the streets of America? OK, because why you have uh, the, the tensions in the streets of America between the ICE agents, the U.S. military and these so-called migrants, that's basically a civil war within itself. And that's going to spark tension among the other citizens of Babylon, you know, and that's going to be a, a open season on you Jake's possibly. So you Jake's man, you need to just stay your ass out the way. But we understand that Jake is not going to Jake don't ever take heed to the prophets. But it says here, and I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city should be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. <laughs> and half of the city should go forward to captivity, which is them concentration camps, and the residue of the people should not be cut off from the city, all right? Because you're going to have what they call the, uh, the four sword judgment. You get the scriptures say that you have some for the, 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 the fowls of, I mean, foam for the dogs to tear then you got some that's meant for the sword some famine to the famine then you got those that's destined to the captivity to the captivity which is going into those detention centers which america has over 800 active fema camps here okay so you have several detention centers here in babylon the great and hey you go into one of them then just don't expect to be heard from again because <laughs> like i said in that dream i had Shit, I wasn't in uh, I wasn't in good old Missouri or Kansas no more. They took a nigga down south to Georgia somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So hey, you Keisha's out there, hey, you may be from Chicago, but you may wake up in a FEMA camp all the way in motherfucking New Mexico somewhere, <laughs> or all the way in Canada, where you may be in a FEMA camp in Tennessee some damn where, you know. <laughs> so I don't know, man. It's getting ready to get. It's looking real, real finicky for you tribes. Um. Let's go here. What is this? Uh, da, 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 da. Jeremiah 4. It's the scripture says, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. All right. So, uh, yep, the start of verses uh, Jeremiah 4. And this start of verses 27. It says, For thus says the Lord said, The whole land should be desolate. Yet would I not make a full end before this show the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it and purposed it and would not repent. Neither would I turn back from it, but the whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. Now, when you go into that in this modern day age, that's talking about your military, man. OK, your horsemen, because when you think of a horse, it represents power. OK, rulership. It says your horsemen and your bowmen and you think of a bowman, you think of an archer. OK, and what's the modern day bow, the gun? And it says, and they should go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks and every city should be forsaken and not a man should dwell therein because these cities are going to be desolate because the majority of the people that's in these cities, they're going to be put to death, whether it be from rioting, whether it be from the famine, the pestilence or being in them concentration camps. These cities are going to be totally laid desolate, man. OK, you're going to have all types of attacks here. You're going to have blowing bridges skyscrapers are going to talk but it's going to look like some last of us type ordeal and this is coming to a city near you very soon and it says and when thou art spoiled what wilt thou do it says though thou close thyself with crimson though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold though thou rentest thy face with paintings in vain should thou make thyself fair and thy lovers will despise thee and they will seek thy life okay so all you women out there even though this is talking about the nation of israel but narrowing down to you women You've been in bed with the serpent for all this time. So now you're getting ready to get bit of the serpent's venom. Okay, you're getting ready to feel the serpent's wrath upon you because you've sold out to him. Like I mentioned, it was mainly Israelite women that got those uh, text messages to, to report to pick cotton. You know, because they know ultimately that women are ultimately their, their property, your slaves. All right. But it says here, for I've heard the voice as of a woman in travail. And the anguish as of her that bringeth forth our first child, and the voice of the daughter of Zion that bewildered herself, that spread her hands, saying, Woe is me now, 
for my soul is weary because of murderers. And this is going to be the, the mindset in Jacob's trouble because nobody is coming to save you. Okay, you're going to pray to your gods and your different idols and relics and nobody is going to help you. But the elect will be delivered. And you're going to notice this, the deliverance or you're going to notice the protection that the Most High is going to have upon his elect versus the two thirds of our people. And people are going to start to say, wait a minute, these people ain't being phased by what's happening in the streets of America. But these people are getting tarred off and hemmed up and thrown head first in FEMA camps and being put to death mercilessly in the streets. You're going to notice that we're going to be protected and you're not. OK, because you didn't repent. OK, this is why we push repentance. And every day, brothers should be repenting, you know, praying to the Heavenly Father, man, begging for mercy, pleading for mercy, because all in all, none of us is really exempt from this judgment if we're not of the Lord's elect. Just to put that out there. Uh, let's get one more precept and we'll end it. Point is being made. Uh, let's go to the book of 2nd address 16. And let's start at verses 68. Uh, damn. I actually had a picture. I want to, matter of fact, I'll just post it as the thumbnail. I'll do that. Because it was uh, actually, you know, matter of fact, yeah, it was, I was sent a text message. Uh, and uh, it was going into how Esau basically is, is getting bold enough with Jake. It was like a racist. It, it Actually, one of the uh, saints has sent it to me. And I was looking at it, and they were showing me how basically Esau was getting bold against Jake, putting racist shit, saying all types of shit, man. So this is the spirit in the air, the spirit, the spirit of the of, of, of dissension and, and 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 fucking hate, man. That's that's just what it is, you know. But second, there just sixteen and sixty eight. It says, "For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being offered, being idle, offered with things into idols, and you know." That MOTB. And they that consented to them should be had in derision and, and reproach and trodden underfoot. Okay, those of you that go into FEMA camps. It says, For that should be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Now, could this be part of the, de the deportation process? We don't know. Okay, but whatever that is, it's going to kick off a trend of events that's going to put this nation on, on standby, man. Okay, because like I said, the, the divisions are thick. They're trying to rouse Jake up. And with those text messages, hey, that could go left real quick because Jake is to the point they're ready to rise up against Esau anyway. You know, and this is what they want so they can be justified on declaring martial law. You know, and that may be what they want to happen. So when you rouse up, they can just throw all of you and get all of you out the way. But we understand that's not the will of the Heavenly Father. But it says, for that should be in every place and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. And they should be like madmen, sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. I'm talking about our people. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be, it says, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they should be tried as gold in the fire. So the test is upon us. Hey, this dude, DJ Trump, hey, Lord's will, he, he's the final Trump. Lord's will, he's the one that ushered this country into World War III. And hopefully he's the one that uh, the Lord allows to bring Jacob's trouble because all this is a, a prelude to Jacob's trouble. If you really think about it from the election to the division to the text messages, it's all is all happening according to the scriptures, man. So with that, all praises and glory and honor that's due to you. How about you? How was I? Lord's will you were edified to the next lesson. Shalom. Greetings. You have been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. 29-year-old Monet Miller, a public relations executive from Atlanta, was shocked to get one by name. Greetings, Monet M. You have been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. Our executive slaves will come get you in a brown van. When you opened your phone and you read that text, what was your reaction? I opened up my text and I saw that and I was just like... What would you say to the people who are behind these texts? I would just say you are insane. Another target, Talia Jones from Spotsylvania, Virginia, received both an email and a text. When I got online and saw that a lot of people were getting See, it. Look at the type of keys that's getting it. You have been selected to pick. These hoes, they, they, bro, like these women finna catch it, man. These are the type of keys 
the baddies, the boss bitches. I don't need no nigga. You see, the Lord finna fuck them up, man. But Salakia. Yeah. Y'all watch your reserve, Brockathah. Shalom. Um. At the nearest plantation. 29 year old Monet Miller, a public relations executive from Atlanta, was shocked to get one by name. Greetings, Monet M. You have been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. Our executive slaves will come get you in a brown van. When you opened your phone and you read that text, what was your reaction? I opened up my text and I saw that and I was just like, What would you say to the people who are behind these texts? I would just say you are insane. Another target, Talia Jones from Spotsylvania, Virginia, received both an email and a text. When I got online and saw that a lot of people were getting it, all people of color, people in elementary school, middle school, I think that's the part that made me sad because I'm like, these are children. A lot of them are oblivious to what this even really means. The number of Americans who have received the mysterious texts is unknown, but that number could be in the hundreds, perhaps even thousands. And the echoes of slavery are unmistakable with references to cotton picking and plantations. Most of the victims are black and include students at Clemson University, the University of Alabama, Missouri State, and a historically black college in Nashville. Cybersecurity expert Joseph Steinberg. It's relatively easy to obtain lists of phone numbers, right? You go online, you can look at, uh, you know, school activities. Often there are documents that have been posted of team membership or club memberships that don't have proper protection. And the people who do these types of things know how to obtain these. Welcome to Text Now. Some of the texts come via Text Now, a phone company that offers free numbers and anonymity. As soon as we became aware, our trust and safety team acted quickly, rapidly disabling the related accounts in less than an hour, a statement says. CBS Morning's Adriana Diaz reported that one text was traced to a Fort Wayne, Indiana area code. That person said the message was a prank before abruptly ending the call. It's so disgusting and so scary. And it really brings up trauma that's passed down generations.